When we work with municipalities all over the world, we often invite them to come to Copenhagen to experience on their own body how it is to actually walk and being able to cycle in a city. Walking and biking adds a very flexible um, element of movement in a city because you can easily jump off your bike, you can wave to people that you pass, and it creates a very open and, 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 and human city, you could say. Today we have businessmen that cycle, we have the ministers in parliament that cycle, we have the crown prince that cycles. Cycling is not just for the poor, it is actually improving the mob mobility of the society in general. The connectivity and the diversity of the public space network in a city is extremely important for the life quality of the people living here. The healthy city, the attractive city, is a city that has to have uh, the humanistic values in the center of their decision making. Um, and, and, and that's not an easy task. It sounds very easy, but you have to actually visualize people in planning. Uh, and that makes people that are biking and, and walking <clears throat> as visible in planning as the people driving in cars. Here in uh, Neaboke, which is one of the main arteries and main streets, um, coming right from the suburbs and all the way into the center of the city. Um, the city have experimented for the past couple of years with extending uh, the width of the cycle tracks to the double. Uh, experiments like this in Neuerbrugel has inspired many cities. Um, for example, New York municipality. I think they get it very inspired of the, of the inclusiveness that we have in the city, uh, the fact that there is a, a, as the, the amount of cyclists is not contradictory to having a safe mobility system. In fact, we have been able to show that the more people you cy that, that cycle, the safer the street becomes.